The question, what is mass, is a tricky one to answer. The concept is essential to physics, but not easy to explain. Put simply, mass is how much stuff is in something, or a measure of how much matter is in an object. So when we put Laura here on the scales, we can find her mass. But now we're going to look at some of the situations we use mass in, because actually there are different types of mass which we use in different situations. For example, we're going to look at inertial mass and gravitational mass. Inertial mass can be defined by the m in Newton's second law, f equals ma. When you apply a force to an object, it then accelerates, and the bigger the force, the bigger the acceleration, but mass stays constant. Gravitational mass can be defined by another of Newton's equations. Imagine two objects, say the Earth and an asteroid. The mass of the first object, the Earth, is m1, and the mass of the asteroid is m2. There is d metres between the centres of the two objects, and there is a force pulling each to the other of f newtons. Now, according to Newton's gravitational law, f equals g times m1 times m2, all divided by d squared. So the force is inversely proportional to the distance squared. So if you double the distance, the force would be reduced by a quarter. It makes sense that the m in this equation would be exactly the same as the m in f equals ma. That is, if mass is how much matter is in an object, the asteroid has not gained or lost any stuff between the two equations. However, in quantum physics, considering the inertial mass and gravitational mass to be the same may be more complicated than first imagined. In this coriander seed, there are probably about 10 to the 24 atoms. Here is a helium atom. Atoms are made up of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atom and electrons which orbit the nucleus. We can find the rest mass energy of a particle using Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. So, for example, E of an electron equals 8.19 times 10 to the minus 14 joules. Even smaller than an atom, and even smaller than a proton or a neutron, are quarks. There are six flavours of quarks and are usually put in three pairs. These are up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom. Up and down are the two lightest, followed by strange, which is slightly smaller than charm, then bottom and top, which is the most massive. The other type of matter particles are leptons. Again, there are six of these, and we have already met one of them, the electron. We also have the muon and the tau, which are more massive than the electron. The other three are types of neutrinos. The electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. There are other types of particles in the universe. For example, bosons. Bosons are force-carrying particles. For every force, there is a particle which carries out the action of this force. Some boson particles are heavy, such as the weak force bosons, W+, plus, W-, minus, and Z bosons, with masses of 80.22 and 80.22 and 91.187 mega electron volts, respectively. Other bosons are said to have no rest mass at all, such as the virtual photon, which carries the electromagnetic force. However, there are some proposed particles which have not yet been found or detected. One of these may give an explanation for how particles get mass, known as the Higgs boson. In a similar way to how iron interacts with a magnetic field, it has been suggested that there is a Higgs field which exists across the universe and particles get their mass by interacting with this field. Some particles, like the photon, are not affected by the field, but others interact with it strongly. In these cases, as they move through the field, it causes some distortion, which lends mass to the particle. If this is true, there must be a particle which is related to the Higgs field, the Higgs boson. <laughs>